All right, so we got the 20 best single player games of the last decade. This is by Mojo. Please, get to video. Let's see what they say. Who do you think you're talking to? Hades? Oh, so they, are they going by 2020 and up or um, 2014 and up? Welcome to Mojo Plays, and there's nothing more okay, than and up. sitting down for some well-deserved alone time with some of our favorite single-player games of the last 10 years. <sighs> we don't have to do this at all if you oh, man. To. Real quick. Okay, should I give y'all my top five? This is of the last decade, so we're probably going like 2010s and up or just 2014 and up. All right, wait till the end of the video. I'm gonna give you my top, uh, my my, my uh, top five. My, I'm gonna give you my top five. I should give you my top twenty, but top twenty is a little too long. I gotta like actually make like a list, or whatever. I give you guys my top five at the end of the video. Definitely want to. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Alan Wake Two. First Alan Wake first. Two is in the top What's twenty. Your name? Okay. It's not often that a cult classic manages to get a sequel, let alone one that manages to outperform the original in every way imaginable. Thirteen years after the release of Alan Wake, uh, Alan okay. finally escaped the dark place. It's their opinion, so Somehow, I'm not going to say nothing, you know? nightmare has only gotten more horrific. Alan Wake 2 is by far the most ambitious title from Remedy and the mad lad Sam Lake. Featuring two protagonists players can switch between, playing each of their respective campaigns in whatever order they wish. This not only expands the scope of Bright Falls and the surrounding areas, but also allows players to experience Alan's numerous escape attempts from the dark place from his perspective. Combined with one of the greatest uses of music in all of gaming and an unrelentingly oppressive atmosphere okay. filled with constant tension. Wow, they're really Alan putting Wake Alan Wake in the, the top 20. Okay. Games we've played in years and absolutely worth the decade long okay. wait. This story. I wonder how far they're going back. Are they it's going monster. are they going back to 2014? Metroidvanias have become one of the most popular genres in all oh, of gaming wow. outside of the recent influx of Souls likes. And while the genre's namesakes, Metroid and Castlevania, laid the groundwork, Hollow Knight perfected the formula. I've never played Hollow Knight before ever in my life. I think see here's the thing, right? I'm probably going to see, like, a lot of games that I haven't played before. And I wouldn't say, like, I'm some type of, like, guy that, like, plays all the mainstream games or whatever. But at the same time, like, if, if they, you know, like, this game right here, I've never played this game. I've never even seen this game. This game came out in 2017. I didn't even know this game existed. I do know what Castlevania, um, that game, like, that vampire Castlevania game, I know what that game is. But I've never, ever in my life ever played Hollow Knight before. Love. Hollow Knight managed to bring all the elements of not only Metroidvanias, but also classic old-school platforming with challenging combat encounters and rewarding exploration. The music, art style, and wonderful use of environmental storytelling showcase a once vibrant world that has since fallen in the titular knight's quest to rid it of its infection. Despite coming from a relatively small and unknown team, Hollow Knight quickly became one of the most highly respected games in the genre. I, I have not long -awaited follow -up ever song even played this game. Never. Anticipated titles of the generation. Hades. You know, Hades has a, like, bro, their community, bro, like, the Hades community is so, like, loyal and, like, big, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not surprised. And, like, I'm to be fair, I've never played Hades before. I have seen, like, I think... I've seen like a streamer play Hades before. Um, it looked kind of cool. I just never played it before, but I'm not surprised that you know that Mojo decided to put it in in, uh, in their top 20. I'm not surprised at all. The roguelike genre is almost as old as gaming itself, and is one that has experienced very little innovation since its inception. However, Supergiant Games not only managed to craft one of the best roguelites of all time, but also completely revolutionized the genre itself. By incorporating the cycle of live, die, repeat into the narrative, players were no longer punished by death, but rewarded with vital character and narrative moments, encouraging them to attempt just one more run to discover the next tidbit of the story to fill out the game's fascinating world. The addition of boons, which offered vital gameplay tweaks, also offered players a way to customize each run, and these decisions could also affect your relationships with the numerous gods offering aid. Beautifully animated and meticulously detailed with some of the most rewarding gameplay in the genre, Hades is not to be missed even by those who've never played a roguelike. Fine. Then go get out. I, I want to see how far they go back. That's the thing, though. Because I have a list in my head right now. <laughs> Wasn't planning on it, Father. 
Super Mario Odyssey. Okay, so Nintendo they're going back to 2017. Always been the First of all, Super Mario Odyssey is a really good game. I'm trying to see, like, because, like, I'm seeing, like, a lot of games go to, like, 2017, stuff like that. Uh, and they said that games of like the last decade. So I'm trying to look, like I'm trying to calculate because obviously we're in 2024. This video came out like two weeks ago, and if so if, if they're going by games of the last decade, are they going by like you know to 2024? Uh, sorry, 2014, or are they going to, you know to 2010s and up? Because if we're going for 2010s and up, I'm gonna be honest with you. I might have to change my list. Peter Kings. I might have to change my list. And Mario's I might have to. Recent solo outing Odyssey might be one of the plumber's best. Odyssey's a good game five. though. Using Mario's cap is not only a weapon, but also a gameplay mechanic by giving players the ability to capture enemies and objects allowed for player experimentation in a way the series never had before. Nintendo also made tweaks to the traditional Mario formula with inventive level designs and new abilities, as well as costumes for Mario to unlock. With multiple worlds to explore, secrets to find, and a wealth of challenges to complete, Super Mario Odyssey isn't just the best 3D Mario game of all time, it's also a celebration of Mario's legacy and his genre-defining impact on the industry. Disco Elysium. Precinct 57 said this. I have never in my life ever heard of Disco Elysium before. Am I missing out? I miss Precinct 41 sent you. The term role-playing game has never been a more apt description than when used to describe Disco Elysium. Players are given almost complete freedom to mold their character to their preferred specifications more acutely than any other role-playing game to date. Taking place in a forgotten city, the player character must investigate a grisly murder as well as their own personal demons that narrate their every action and decision. The entire game is built around a series of skill checks, dice rolls, and dialogue trees in which the player's actions directly affect not only the narrative, but how the many unique and just as insane townsfolk perceive you and respond. You know what? I mean, listen, a game like this, right, that like, that like obviously like your decisions matter and stuff like that i love games like that i love role-playing games like that but i don't know it, it's a and maybe i'm just like i don't know games like that that like you know like every decision that you do matters and, and stuff like i think there's like a lot of pressure on those games but at the same time though it does add like a lot of fun because literally whatever decision you make i mean it's kind of like um what's the one game detroit become human how like bro there are outcomes to every single decision that you make um i mean and i do find like a lot of fun in those games it's just i don't know like this game right here i, uh, I don't know maybe i mean i'll look uh, i'll look a little bit after it but I'm, if i'm being honest with you i don't know I'm, i ain't really feeling this your antics with a gorgeous painted art style like, it seems cool but i'm not really feeling it i'm gonna be honest with you of interesting characters and sets a new bar for how much freedom developers allow their players to have within their worlds prove them wrong yeah, nah, it's, it's not for me, not for me, not for me. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Okay, so they're going back. Uncharted 4, bro, is a really good game. Over, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. They hit on this one. Look, Nate, I'm going to make you a one-time offer. Drop everything. I, I agree with this. Go they home. actually put Uncharted in the top 20. That's crazy. Live your life. Or we can just end it right here. It's not often we get to see our favorite video game protagonists get a proper send-off, let alone the happy ending we've always wanted for them. For Nathan Drake's final outing as everyone's favorite wisecracking Nathan. Creator, Naughty Dog gave us not only his most personal journey so far, but also his most epic. Naughty Dog had already perfected the Uncharted formula, so this time they instead focused on putting Nathan in some of the most technically impressive and death-defying moments of his career in some of the most visually spectacular locations in the entire series. The cinematic presentation added additional depth to the already beloved characters, and the inclusion of new gameplay mechanics such as the grappling hook expanded not only Nathan's exploration skills, but also his combat options. Uncharted 4 further deviated from previous entries by forcing Nathan to re-examine his priorities and face the consequences of his luck. You know what? I, listen, in my opinion, I think that uh, Uncharted 4, I, bro, and maybe some people like disagree or whatever, but it's fine. I think that this game was like a little ahead of his time in a way. I think that like, I mean, bro, Uncharted 3 was a really good game too. Bro, I was playing Uncharted 3 on a PS3. Oh my goodness gracious. And then Uncharted 4 came through, bro. His whole story and like, you know, obviously like in my opinion, I mean, he was right, bro. Like the guy that's commentating, whatever, he was right, bro. His send off was absolutely perfect, bro. 
bro, I just wish that we had at least like one more Uncharted game. Um, obviously, like you know, I think we got like Tomb Raider now. Um, but bro, I would love just just like a like a Nathan Drake cameo in like one of like the Naughty Dog games or something. Like that. I think that would be uh, pretty cool. Finally, running out. Nathan Drake, that two-bit thief. Yeah. Risking it all for some piece of treasure. The boy, man. I guess that's how they know me. How they'll remember me. Horizon Zero Dawn. Where the trail leads. You know what? Horizon Zero Dawn, in my opinion, I think is one of the best visually like looking games in the last decade. Not and and here's the thing, here's what I say about this, right? Not in the sense of like, okay, it looks better than everybody else. I just think that like just like the pure like scenery I, I think just like looking at the game not even playing it but just looking at the game i think it looks really 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 good in my, that's in my opinion though all right don't kill me don't stab me up i just think that that's like uh one of the best like visually like looking games and uh in the last decade i will go it's so like it looks big sony has had no shortage of inventive and interesting ips over the years but most of these titles fell into a familiar formula Guerrilla Games' Horizon Zero Dawn not only broke this tradition, but also gave fans a brand new heroine to stand alongside the likes of industry icons like Laura Croft. The world of Horizon Zero Dawn and Aloy's journey through an overgrown apocalyptic land battling robot dinosaurs is immediately engaging, and the story and mystery surrounding the world and its inhabitants drive players forward to uncover more. Combat was also more intuitive, allowing players to target specific body parts while also utilizing a myriad of gadgets to accent their encounters and keep every battle feeling fresh and consistently thrilling. While numerous aspects would be improved upon in the sequel, Zero Dawn remains a standout for its innovative gameplay and engrossing world to explore. What is it? The end. Or how it begins anyway. Persona 5. Okay. I'm gonna be honest with you, they're fired for putting this in. Persona, bro, oh my goodness, bro. Persona soundtrack, I'm gonna be honest. I mean, bro, it's up there with the Zelda uh, soundtrack, bro. Yeah, bro. Like, I, I would put, like, obviously, like, whenever it comes down to, like, soundtrack stuff like that, I think, like, you know, like, Minecraft's up there. Um, Zelda's up there. I mean, I'm, I don't think Mario, I, Mario is like up, but it's not up there with like Minecraft and like Zelda. And then bro, Persona's up there. What's that one uh, franchise? Uh, y Yukuza, 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 Yakuza. Was it Yakuza, I think? Their soundtrack's up there as well. Um, um, Final Fantasy soundtrack is kind of, it's kind of up there. I don't think it's up there with like the big three or big four, but it, it's it's definitely up there, uh, bro. Persona soundtrack is absolutely fuego. Do me a favor and behave yourself, all right? Turn-based RPGs might not be as popular as they once were, but if they could all be as insane as my sound on? as oh, it is. Five, we think perceptions might change. Absolutely oozing with personality, Persona feels like a slice of life anime come to life. Complete with players needing to attend classes, maintain healthy or, depending on your choices, unhealthy relationships, and even find a job to make money. And then there's the completely off the wall supernatural side, in which all the aforementioned battles take place with some of the most diverse and insane character designs in the genre. Full of memorable characters, an incredibly designed world for players to live their day to day lives, frenetic battles, a deep and engaging narrative, and an absolutely gorgeous art direction. Persona 5 is a once-in-a-lifetime game, only enhanced by its own re-release, which somehow managed to add even more incredible content. But if my voice is reaching you, I beg you, please overcome this game and save the world. The Last of Us Part 2. Oh my goodness. Oh my, bro, that, I'm going to be honest with you, that's in my list. That's in my top five list. Of the, of the last decade, The Last of Us Part 2 is definitely in my, is in my, top, five, uh, is in my top five list. You gotta find... And I'm gonna kill every one of them. The Last of Us remains a masterpiece in interactive narrative storytelling, and one that many fans felt told a complete story with no need for a sequel. However, no matter what your viewpoint is on the necessity of Part 2's existence, the game remains unchallenged as a mechanical and cinematic benchmark. The new characters and locations were wonderfully realized, 
full of impressive detail that made the world and its inhabitants feel like real people trying to survive the end of the world. Right? No it felt like a the show. Split the fan base, but the performances of everyone involved remain some of the best in the entire industry. Simple gameplay tweaks opened combat and exploration opportunities for giving players even more freedom during encounters than ever before. Part He's right. Two might have originally seemed like an unnecessary follow-up to a masterpiece, but it's one that has thankfully experienced a reevaluation in the years since. What the hell? Are I'm, you doing I, here? I, 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 listen. I still think that she should have killed Abby. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it was only fair. It, I, listen, I don't care. You know, she had the kid with her, or whatever. I don't care. I think she should have still, you know, did what she had to do, bro. If you, it, oh, listen. If you ask me, you think I let you do this on your own? Cyberpunk 2077. Are really? The last 20 single player the wow. Single player games. Wow. In the last 20 years. Oh sorry, in the last 10 years. I'm sorry. Cyberpunk. Can I name 19 single player games better than Cyberpunk? I think I can. I think I can name tw 20 more. Cyberpunk isn't a bad game. It's just like the launch was very like I think the launch ruined it a little bit because of like all the bugs and how like and how like scuffy it was. Th that's what I think. But God, samurai. I mean, we did have the boy have in here. To burn. We we did have the boy Keanu Reeves in this in this thing, bro. There's no denying Cyberpunk 2077 had what can graciously be described as a rocky launch. Told you. Thankfully, CD Projekt was scuffy. Red stuck with it and not only delivered the initial <laughs> promised experience, but managed to give players more than they ever could have expected. The world of Night City feels more real and Oh, and it had um Idris I would just what was his name? The addition of Keanu Reeves as Johnny His Stone name, him. Only sweeten the deal. Boasting a wealth of options for players to completely customize their playstyle and experience, it's easy to get lost in the world of cyberpunk simply driving around the city and living in the atmosphere. With the release of Phantom Liberty, the game was completely overhauled to such an extent the developers even suggested that those who completed the game start a new playthrough to replay the game as the devs fully intended. Wait, they said that? It. There's one thing I can tell you about this city. You either love it or want to burn it. Marvel Spider Man. Yes, sir. Wait, you? Though there's been no shortage of Spider Man games since the inception of gaming, only a handful have truly nailed the feeling. I agree with this. This is definitely, this is definitely be on the list. Insomniac's 2018 entry did. Allowing players to take up the web shooters of Spider-Man in his prime, not only did this let us step into the spandex of a Peter who was already a fully-fledged hero, Insomniac's implementation of Spidey's combat moves, web swinging, and comic accurate... Bro, they did so good with this game right here, bro. ...sensation of zipping between the Big Apple skyscrapers. This decision also let the developers skip over all of Spidey's well-documented history even a casual fan was familiar with and build new relationships and antagonists in their own way. Delivering one of the best experiences as Spider-Man and one of his most emotionally charged adventures in his long history of video games. Spider-Man, look, next time, leave the fighting to the pros. Man. Okay, but what if there aren't any around? <laughs> Good one. The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Yeah, what, what, you know what? Monsters. The Witcher series. I actually, you know what? I think the Witcher deserves to be in this list. I think so. I got into Witcher like I, I got into uh the Witcher a little late. I didn't really play it like 2015 or whatever. But like knowing about the game now and stuff like that, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it deserves to be in here. And, so, and bro, all right. So listen, we're going back to 2015 now. Here's the thing: if they're going back to like 2014, 2013. Then my list has to change a little bit. I'm gonna be honest with you, but if it's just like, just like 2010s and up, then bro, oh, I'm gonna have a hard time thinking of my top five. I kind of have my top five uh, already. Releases, but it was the third entry that not only put CD Projekt Red on everyone's radar in a big way, but also made The Witcher a genre-defining title. With an impressive cast of both main and supporting characters, the world of The Witcher came to life and everything from the narrative to the impressive attention to detail in the immersive world and setting made Geralt's latest adventure a must-play for any RPG fan or anyone with a casual interest. 
The entire world was designed with player exploration in mind, with countless secrets and hidden quests and interesting NPCs all making the world feel truly alive, thanks to gorgeous graphics and world design. Along with multiple expansions, The Witcher 3 is not only one of the best games of all time, but also one of the best deals in all of gaming. Geralt, of some dignity, you know how this will end. Final Fantasy 16. No you know what? I, I kind of agree with this. I, I kind of agree with this. The Final Fantasy franchise is one of the oldest in the industry, and yet somehow each new title is an event, telling a new story and offering new ways to play. I agree with this. Series. I agree with this. This, this is definitely in the top 20. Top 20, yeah. Some of the biggest changes yet, focusing on one protagonist and taking a far more action oriented approach to combat. The action-heavy combat offered newcomers an entry point for the franchise, and despite the typical RPG elements the series is known for being somewhat dumbed down, still offered players a variety of options in combat to cater to their playstyle. And, quite honestly, it worked. Clive struggles to survive the dying world of Valistia corrupted by the backroom political machinations of the numerous kingdoms alongside his deep personal connection to the icons is consistently engrossing. Clive is one of the series' best protagonists in years, thanks in no small part to Ben Starr giving his absolute all in his performance. I thought I was ready for this. I know, but we will face it together. Astrobot. You don't always They put Astrobot? You know <laughs> Okay, alright, hold on, alright, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not gonna disrespect Astrobot in the slightest, okay? Let's let's just be real. But listen, hold up. They're going because I at first I thought okay cool maybe they're going off of because the title of the, uh, the video is the best the twenty best single player games of the last decade so I'm thinking okay they're either going twenty twenty and up because uh, of like you know a new decade or whatever or they're going twenty tens and up okay or they're going twenty fourteen and up that's what I'm thinking and I haven't seen a game that was past or sorry that was earlier than twenty fourteen so I'm guessing they're going twenty fourteen and up. Um, okay, Astrobot is a really, I think it's a really good game. Graphically, it looks really nice. I think, bro, I think, in my opinion, right, and you might be weirded out when I say this, but I think, like, Astrobot is, like, a, um, that game is, like, eye candy a little bit. Like, the game just looks really, really good. It looks bright. Um, obviously, it's, like, a PlayStation type of game. Um, but to be honest with you, top 20, though, top 20 single, like, uh, story mode games in, a, in the past 10 years. I think I can name 20 uh, story mode games better than Astrobot. Astrobot's a really good game and all, but I don't think that this, in my opinion, I think I can name like 20, you know, uh, games, 20 story mode games that's better than uh, Astrobot. And Astrobot's a really good game, but, you know, it's their list. Need to reinvent the game to be one of the best in the genre. As the follow-up to one of the best games already on the PS5, Astro's Playroom, Team Asobi managed to... I mean, of course it's one of the best games on the PS5, because PS5s, don't, they don't really got games like that. L listen, I don't want to disrespect it. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm a PlayStation fanboy, but at the end of the day, like, PlayStation 5, they, they don't really have games like that. Not Like, not now. And, you know, to be fair, a lot of games that are coming out right now are mostly remakes um obviously like their sports games and stuff like that like you know those come out like every single year same as like call of duty call of duty games come out every single year and stuff like that besides those games um with these story mode games and stuff like that i mean there have been new games coming out but like let's not like but you know let's just keep it real like you know the ps5 has been out for what how long three four years um i mean i'm here's the thing right we're going to get a lot of, like, you know, PlayStation games and Xbox games, stuff like that. Like, a lot of next-gen games. We're going to get a lot of uh, next-gen games next year whenever, like, you know, everything starts popping off with, like, GTA and, and uh, Mafia, Borderlands. And uh, and I'm not just talking about uh, PlayStation 5. I'm talking about PlayStation 5 and a new uh, Xbox Series uh, S and X and stuff like that. So, at the end of the day, like, whenever it comes to, like, next-gen games, stuff like that, we have been getting uh, next-gen games. But, you know, to be fair, bro... Um, a lot of games are just now starting to come out with like these banger games. Um, and I told you guys, bro, 2024 is not really going to be like a, and I knew this. I told you at the beginning of the year, I wish I could like remember the video that I told you guys this in, but at the beginning of the year, I told you guys, you know, in, in the earlier videos, I was like, bro, 2024 is not going to be 
that big of a gaming year because we got so many great games dropping in 2025. 2025 is going to be like, it is, bro, 2025 is going to be like 2018 in a way. 2025 is going to be like 2023. We are, bro, 2023, bro, that was a... That was like the rare, like golden nugget that people in the 1950s in San Francisco was looking for. Like, bro, 2023, bro, was so rare because we had banger games dropping every single month. We had like two to three banger games dropping legit every single month. It was it was full. Uh, 2024 has had a lot of good games as well. Black Myth Wukong. We had um, the Elden Ring uh, DLC. What other games been dropping? Um... Let's see what other games. Um, 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 um. Hold up, bro. My brain is bro. My brain is flowing at like a thousand miles per hour right now. Um, what, what, what other games do we have? Uh, major games dropping this year. Um, um. Wait, hold up. Damn, I might be proving myself right on this one. Uh, and I'm talking about major games out the way. You guys can actually just fill me in down down in the comments, cause bro, like, and bro, and I cover most of these games. How could I not remember? Um. Um, the Suicide Squad game. Okay, we'll, we'll put that in. Um, bro, it's been a really long year. Wow, I'm bro, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking booty right now, bro. What are major game? I'm gonna think while the video is playing. And more challenging platformer while maintaining everything that made the original such a delight. It's almost impossible to play Astrobot without a sense of childish glee watching Astro interact with countless bot versions of iconic PlayStation characters while also making the best use of the DualSense controller in the entire industry. A love letter to all things Sony and PlayStation, the game is entirely enjoyable for those just looking for a solid platformer, but for those who have been playing games for decades, Astrobot is a time capsule of our childhood memories we'd long forgotten. We really can't recommend this one enough. Do yourself a favor and join Astro in a trip down memory lane. Elden Ring. Duh. Duh. You know this game. You know this game. If you've been gaming in the last, like, what? Four years? You know this game going to be in here, bro. You know it is. FromSoft has become a juggernaut in the gaming industry and one of the most influential developers in history with their tough but fair souls formula. With numerous entries in the genre and endless copycats, FromSoft once again set the bar for their own genre with Elden Ring. Giving players a fully open world to explore and discover at their own leisure not only offered newcomers an easier jumping on point, but also gave longtime Souls fans a wealth of hidden secrets and lore to find and piece together. The lands between have been purposely designed and crafted to reward those who go off the beaten path with new armor and weapon sets and harken back to the genre's golden days of discovery when games didn't hold the player's hand with countless markers and objectives. Elden Ring is a landmark and genre-defining title that everyone owes to themselves to try out at least once. Make of thyself that which he desire, be it a lord. Be it a god. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Okay. No, no, all right, all right. This is a fire. This is uh, okay. All right. See, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was waiting for I was waiting for Zelda. I can't lie to you, bro. My list is changing so much. Wow, I got it, bro. Oh man. All right, hold up. <sighs> Nintendo have always been pioneers in innovative video game mechanics. The Legend of Zelda series is usually at the forefront of these improvements. While no one was complaining about the current slate of the Zelda franchise, Nintendo not only completely rewrote their own playbook with Breath of the Wild, but also revolutionized the open world genre. Setting players loose in a devastated Hyrule, we were given free reign to explore and play the game however we wanted, and the game's impressive physics allowed for creativity and experimentation. This approach to open world game design also allowed players to find their own solutions for the game's puzzles and combat encounters, while still managing to offer longtime fans the truest form of the Legend of Zelda experience in the franchise's history. May I ask? Do you really remember me? Baldur's Gate 3. You want to play the hero?
by design allow players to Chudios has with Baldur's Gate 3. Along with the traditional RPG trappings, Baldur's Gate 3 captures the true feeling of the Dungeons & Dragons formula in a way no game within the genre has done before. For every action, no matter how outlandish, there is a reaction, and the world and characters will react to the player's choices. Alongside some incredibly well-written characters, and by far one of the deepest character creators ever, Baldur's Gate 3 offers players the chance to fully and completely live out their wildest D&D adventures in whatever way they can imagine. With over 17,000 possible variations of the game's ending, Baldur's Gate 3 might be the only game you ever need to play again. Bow before me. Bow before I, I disagree, but okay. Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, nice. Detrained. Okay, that's a good pick. Good pick. Good pick. Good pick. Good pick. The open world genre. Good pick. Good pick. Very little innovation in recent That was years, a good pick. With most devs falling victim to the dreaded Ubisoft formula, but Sucker Punch managed to not only create one of the best open world games in generations, but also add much needed improvements to the stale formula. The tale of Jin Sakai becoming the ghost to defeat the invading Mongols is impeccably told, perfectly encapsulating Jin's struggle for his honor versus his quest to protect and save his people. With an absolutely jaw-dropping open world for players to explore, highly engaging swordplay, brand new genre-defining mechanics, The Guiding Wind might be the best open world innovation in forever, a brilliant cast of supporting characters as well as a protagonist and narrative players can become emotionally invested in, Tsushima's follow-up, Ghost of Yotai, has a high bar to reach. So I'll ask you once again, Samurai, do you surrender? God of War 2018. Where must we go? To a realm beyond your own. Yes, sir. Kratos was already a PlayStation icon. Duh. He carved out his niche in the action the goat. Genre, literally, over the entirety of the Greek saga. But with God of War 2018, we were introduced to a more introspective Kratos, regretful of the brash and arrogant Spartan he used to be. He was young, it's fine. Atreus, whom Kratos attempts to steer from making the same mistakes of his past, was not only a brilliant plot development, but also allowed Kratos to grow as a character alongside his son. The over-the-shoulder perspective and the inclusion of the Leviathan Axe gave combat a much more visceral feel. The Metroidvania-style exploration of the Lake of Nine kept the familiar location constantly engaging as new areas were revealed. Taking Kratos out of Greece made a lot of sense, and the evolution of Kratos as a character delivered a balanced experience for newcomers. <laughs> Bro moved to Iceland. <laughs> fans. Oh, that was uh, something that the <laughs> fight. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. They'll probably yeah. hang you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> you coming, buddy? Every developer <laughs> wants you to live and breathe its atmosphere and truly believe you exist within the game world. No developer has accomplished this better than Rockstar did with Duh. Red Dead Redemption 2. Not only did the game tell one of the most emotional, grounded, and believable narratives all set against the dying of the Wild West, but managed to develop characters players Man, the ending was crazy, man. Became emotionally attached to. Every detail is immaculately created, from the period accurate guns and attire to the horse testicles. The entire open world feels like a real place where many players just live a second life. Facts. Camping, fishing, and either helping or robbing the many small towns and their residents. Arthur Morgan remains one of the best characters ever written. True. In and outside of video games. And there may never be an experience like Red Dead 2 ever again, even by Rockstar themselves. You have my back. Always, Dutch. Did we hey, Dutch. Hey, hey, we need to run the fade. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, for real. Your favorite single player yeah, Dutch, we need to run the fade decade. immediately, bro. Share your picks in the comments. Yeah. Did you enjoy this video? Um, shout out to Mojo Plays, man. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be completely, you know, just to be honest. I know this is a long video because I was, you know, talking and yapping and stuff like that. I'm going to give you guys my top five, okay? Now, this was hard. This was hard, right? Because the top five, bro, you got to cram so much. But I like it, though, because, like, it forces you to, like, you know, remove some games or whatever. All right. 
I'm going to be honest with you. My top five games of the last decade. All right. I'm going to go by from 2014 to now. I think that's how they went. They, they went as far as back as uh, 2015. So 2015 top five games, top five story mode games. Okay. Story mode games. All right. Um, I'm going God of War 2018. This is a no order, by the way. God of War 2018. Uh, I'm going to go Red Dead Redemption uh, 2. That also came out in 2018. I'm going to go Spider-Man 2018 as well. Bro, 2018. Oh, my goodness gracious, bro. 2018, bro. I wish we had another. I wish we had another year. Like I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think 2018 might have to be, what, top two gaming years of all time. Um, so yeah, so I say God of War, Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption. Um... We're going by specifically story mode, right? Give me Last of Us Part 2 of 2020. Uh, that came out in 2020. And then this is probably going to like throw you guys off a little bit. But for number five, give me Detroit Become Human. I think Detroit Become uh, Human story mode is so like... Bro, like the freedom of choices that you have, bro. That's what I'm going to... This is my top five, okay? Don't kill me. But I think that Detroit Become Human belongs in that top five. But that's just me. Um, comment down below, man. What do you guys think uh, about, like, you know, about the, you know, Mojo Plays uh, top 20 best single player games? And, um, oh, and comment down below. What's your top five single player games of the last decade? Um, I really, really, really would want to know. Um, now, if we were saying 2010s and up, oh, yeah, that list would have been way different because there's so many. Oh, man. That, that, brother. Oh, my goodness, bro. I mean, we would have had GTA up in there. We would have had Batman Arkham, one of the Batman Arkham games up in there. Like, yeah, bro. Um, God of War 3 would have been in there. Like, listen, don't listen. Don't play. Because if, if we would have had from 2010s to up, bro, my list would have been undefeated, man. Uh, again, comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this? Uh, actually, no, comment down below your own list. Give me your top, your own top five. Give me your own top five list. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. And peace out.